So apparently, all right, apparently Joe Biden, a.k.a. Dark Brandon, so-called, has been going out there and he's doing midterm uh, campaigning. And a couple people have sent me some clips. I watched a couple of them. Um, this one was the most entertaining to me. Uh, so I wanted to check this one out. Um, and again, you know, what's my prognosis on the midterm elections? All right, look at the congressional ballot polls. Democrats are like one to two points on average ahead of Republicans in congressional ballot polling. Um, Donald Trump and his group have said that they're already laying the groundwork to try to overturn elections that are close. So if generic ballot polling suggests the Democrats are going to win by one or two points, Donald Trump's team is saying that he wants to challenge any election that's within a couple points. We're fucked. Anyway, so Dark Brandon is going out there and uh, he's, uh, you know, he's trying his best uh, to campaign, campaigning for Democrats. Again, the thing that the Democrats do um, that really blows my mind is they will do things that are actually really good and then they won't tell anybody right they, they might say it as they're doing it but then they stop talking about it right like joe biden did the student loan debt forgiveness and again judges and republicans are trying to block it right and uh and you know he just kind of stopped talking about it for a while but now he's back in and uh, remember when uh, the White House Twitter account tweeted out this long epic thread of like just totally destroying these fucking stupid ass MAGA Republicans, right? These dumbass motherfuckers. Like they hired that bitch from New Jersey to run the social media and she was like, ow, right? So anyway, Joe Biden is bringing it back and he's talking once again now that Republicans are trying to block student loan debt. He's uh, talking about it. And this is a pretty good clip. So I wanted to watch this one. Um, and check it out. So this is what we're dealing with when it comes to dark Brandon, folks. And again, this is what's so shocking about Democrats when they actually do something that's moderately decent is because Democrats are essentially professional losers, right? Like, let's be real. Let's be honest. Look at the Democratic Party over the last 30 years, 40 years. They are losers. They're losers. It's a losing party. They're losers. They're fucking stupid ass, dumb fuck losers, right? Like, let's be honest. Let's be real, right? Anytime they do something good, they run away from it. And every time they do something bad, they talk about it endlessly. They're professional losers, right? And so when you look at a Democrat who's doing something not even like, not even good, like not even like, damn, that's epic. But just like, oh yeah, you're acknowledging reality a little bit, like once or twice. Like that's why it's so shocking. <laughs> like whenever we see like Joe Biden go out there and say something that's like milk toast, but like in a good direction, like we're like, holy fuck, dark Brandon, dark Brandon, laser eyes, you know? Cause it's just so rare that a, a Democrat would do that. But anyway, let's jump in. I want to hear it from MAGA Republicans, officials who had hundreds of thousands of dollars of debts even millions of dollars in pandemic relief loans forgiven, who now are attacking, attacking me for helping working class and middle class Americans. My team at the White House posted a video, a video of this, folks, online. You should check it out. Marjorie Taylor Greene, she got over, she and her husband got $180,000 in business loans forgiven. I just, real quick correction, Marjorie Taylor Greene, and her husband? Surely you mean ex-husband. From the PPP program. She said it's completely unfair for us to forgive student loans for working and middle class Americans. Representative Vern Buchanan of Florida said our plan was reckless. Guess how much he got in that program? Forgiven. Two million three hundred thousand dollars. So real quick, this one, I'm gonna rewind this here for a second. So for those of you that don't understand the PPP program, it was passed in the CARES Act, right, of, uh, I want to say March of 2020, maybe it could have been April, I don't, March, I think. Um, and this is where the clip really starts to get good. So anyway, so the PPP uh, was essentially a program to pay companies, corporations, small businesses, right? Um, it was uh, the Paycheck Protection Program, right? So you pay them, and then they pass that onto their employees. That way they can pay them to stay home, right? So you have employees, let's say you have 15 employees, right? You got like three 
uh, you know, fucking stores in one neighborhood. You got 15 employees total. You get a loan from the PPP and, you know, it covers your, your employees' paycheck so they can stay home to protect themselves against coronavirus or whatever. Now, imagine that scenario, right? Like, whoa, people stayed home to protect themselves from a deadly virus? Imagine that happening in 2022, right? But anyway, um, but what happened was essentially the way the bill and the law was worded, right? Again, this is during the Trump administration, the corporate fucking whore administration, the Donald Trump administration, full of corporate cocksucking whores, elite, rich kid, trust fund baby, ivory tower douchebags. The way they wrote that law was basically, now again, it was billed, it was advertised as a way to protect small businesses, but essentially, what it did was it allowed anyone that has any sort of like LLC or any sort of like registered business to just borrow money. Now, again, they borrowed the money and it was like a low interest or I think it was maybe even a zero interest loan where right? they pay it back at some point. But then later on, they basically decided to forgive the PPP loans, they being the, uh, the U.S. government. So what that means is these members of Congress, they basically have fake businesses, right? where they just took money from ostensibly to pay their employees, which they may or may not have done, but maybe they took like, I don't know, maybe they took like, let's say they took uh, $100,000 just to make it easy, but the duration of the lockdown, whatever you wanna say, would uh, they would only need to pay $70,000 to their employees. So they, they, they keep the other 30, right? Or let's say this, you get $100,000, you don't even give it to your employees, you throw it in a fucking, you throw it in the NASDAQ, you throw it in the fucking whatever the fuck, throw it in a fucking oil company, maybe you throw, whatever, right? You got an insider trading deal, you throw it in there, it's a zero interest loan, right? So you throw it in there, let's say the economy crashes, right? But you picked a winner, you picked like one of the companies that did really well, right? Which did happen in late 2020, early and mid uh, 2021, a lot of like, you know, again, you have the crypto craze and all that stuff that was going on, right? So a lot of people made a lot of money and then you just pay back the original and then you just keep all the profit. But then imagine this, you don't even have to pay back the original loan. So you got a zero interest loan, you made a fuckload of money off of it, investing it into the stock market, uh, utilizing your insight or trading technology or your, your uh, insider trading information um and then just you don't even have to pay it back that's fucked up right and then these same douchebag motherfuckers are going to go out there and say ten thousand dollars for a student loan forgiveness that's that again it's a good chunk it's nice but it's a drop in the bucket, let's be honest. And they're going out there saying that that's like, that's gonna destroy the economy. It's ridiculous. Anyway, so this is when the clip gets good. Forgiven, $2,300,000. This is not a joke. Can't make this stuff up. Republican governors wrote me, wrote, wrote me a letter saying this relief was only helps the elite few. Y'all know you're the elite few? I knew you were really special, but no, you're the elite few. I'm serious. Ted Cruz, the great senator from Texas, he said it's for slackers, quote, slackers who don't deserve relief. Who in the hell do they think they are? I mean, but the. So, anyway, this. Now, again, this is a blueprint, right? This is like the prototype. This is how Democrats need to behave on a national level. Instead of Democrats going like, AOC is so far left, she's a communist, she's gonna destroy America and defund the police. <laughs> right? Instead of like Tim Ryan going out there and saying, I agree with the Republicans, the student loan is bad. <laughs> right? Instead of that, National Democrats, all of them, every single one, needs to have a unified message, run on the good things the Democrats have done, and call the fuck out by name the shit fuck Republicans. Call them out by name with facts and fuck them up. And again, we never see Democrats do this because Democrats are professional losers. And so that's why uh, Joe Biden going out there and doing this is so rare. Like, whoa, a Democrat? campaigning in a way that's not pathetic like again this is the prototype this is the bare minimum probably not even the bare minimum but 
This is uh, stuff that we need to see more of. And again, these Republicans are full of fucking shit. But ultimately, we need to understand hypocrisy doesn't matter to these people. They know they're hypocrites. They don't care. That's the thing about Republicans. They don't care. There's no logic, right? Again, like in, in political discourse, right? In this like American ideal, right? People say, oh, you know, both sides come to the table. They debate and they compromise. That's not a thing with Republicans, right? When you sit at the table and debate, that implies that there's like a logic to arguments, right? That implies that like you 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 share a language. Like imagine debating, like you're an American, you speak English, no other language, and imagine debating the economy with someone that speaks and only speaks Mandarin. You can't do it. You can't, you, it's just, you can't. It's impossible to debate the economy with someone who speaks Mandarin when you only speak English. You just can't do it, okay? That's essentially what's going on in Congress, right? Republicans, they don't follow the same language or, or logic trains or trees that, that other people do. They just don't. They don't. So when they say shit like student loan debt only helps the ivory elites in the, in the, in the elite few, that doesn't mean anything. Like, it, it is factually not true, and they say it anyway. They know it's not true, and they say it anyway. So ultimately, hypocrisy is a tool designed to confuse everyone else, right? Because that, like, Oh, Ted Cruz did this, but also, oh, look, Ted Cruz is a hypocrite. He doesn't care. Anytime you and energy you spent debunking misinformation or disinformation or verifiably proving someone to be a hypocrite is time you could have been spending, right, trying to gain power, right? So now, again, I do think it's important for that message to be getting out there, but that is the starting line. It's the starting line. Pointing out Republican hypocrisy is like step one, right? It's not even, it's like, it's it's part A of step one, right? Call them out. But ultimately what you need to do is one, good legislation. Two, run on and remind everyone of good legislation. Three, call out your opponents by name with facts and verifiably prove them to be monsters, which is easy. It's Republicans for Christ's sake. That's easy. Did you know that the average American, check this out. This is how I know that Americans are fucking stupid. Check this out. The average American genuinely believes that Republicans are fiscally responsible and are better on the issue of the economy. And so what is one of the, the biggest things going on in the world? Inflation, right? Americans are so fucking stupid that they navigate this world and somehow come to the conclusion that republicans are fiscally responsible conservatives that want to balance the budget like where did that come from did that come from the same place that said omicron was mild like where did this what, is there like a propaganda factory that's coming out there and coming up with some really fucked up crazy shit? Right? So again, Democrats theoretically want to win elections, right? So they should be talking about how that's just not true. That is one of the most pervasive myths in American society today, almost up there with God and Jesus, right? So, you know, again, when Americans are propagandized to believe inflation is only an American problem, because Amer Americans don't give a fuck about the rest of the world. They don't care about the rest of the world. They don't give a fuck. You think Americans care about the status of European economies? You think America gives a fuck? They don't even know what's going on at all. The average American, if you were to ask the average American, right, what they think about inflation and how it's affecting the global economy, they would just talk about America. They wouldn't know anything about European inflation. You know, they wouldn't know anything about supply lines. They don't care. They don't know anything about that. Why? Because they're Americans are purposefully educated with disinformation to put them in boxes where they can only think about things with a couple of concepts that are both like heavily right-wing overall. So anyway, um, 
But again, so combine Americans not knowing anything about global economies with Americans somehow thinking Republicans are are better. There's no evidence for that. If you ask them for evidence, they, they can't. Like ask someone who thinks Republicans are better on the economy for evidence and they won't be able to do it. They just can't, right? So you combine all these things. So that means, again, if Democrats want to win, they need to start by educating their electorate. They need to start by saying, hey, there is an inflation epidemic. Maybe you could even use the term pandemic all across the all across the world, right? And it's actually affecting Europe way more than us. And again, you know, inflation is bad. And so that's why I'm going to go up there and say, you know, corporations need to be nationalized. Like I'm going to announce that I support nationalizing all oil and energy com uh, corporations so that we can stop being exporting our uh, crucial energy uh, for private profit. You know, that would be what Joe Biden would be saying. Now, again, I know Joe Biden has been doing a little bit uh, of anti-corporate stuff, but again, it's not nearly enough. And anyway, I, I think Democrats are probably not going to do so well in the midterms. I'm scared. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm scared. I'm scared to sell. This is my, uh, you know, if Republicans win either the House or the Senate, all they need is one and America's fucked, right? I need you to understand this. If Republicans can just win the House majority by one seat, we're fucked. We're fucked. Why? Because they'll block everything. They'll block everything. So there's going to be no more legislation that will be passed via Congress, right, that will have any impact positively on American citizens. It's over. It's over. As soon as Republicans win one over the 50% plus one in either chamber, we're fucked. It's over. It's over. It's done. Like, I'm telling you, this is... So they're going to win. They're going to block everything that Biden wants to do that's good for you. Right. Then they're going to lie about it and say that Biden's not doing anything, even though Biden's trying to do stuff, but they're blocking it. Then they're going to campaign on how Biden is a feckless loser, which would be true in this instance because he hasn't passed anything. Then they're going to use that to fuel the 2024 campaign, which if Biden is running in 2024 is going to be a death sentence. I say this death sentence for this country. I say this. If Republicans win either chamber. Biden has to step down from 2024. It's no, it's non-negotiable, non-negotiable. I mean, I think that that should be the case regardless. That's my opinion. He should not run for another term regardless. But if Republicans win in either chamber, he needs to immediately, immediately bow out of the 2024 race because it's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's just not going to work. Republicans are going to spend two years doing fake investigations into Hunter Biden's laptop Right. And the Democrats aren't going to do anything to combat the disinformation. The average American is going to be brainwashed enough to vote for a Republican in 2024. Again, Biden needs to drop the fuck out immediately if Democrats do not win in both chambers. That is the only option. But obviously, the best option would be if Republicans don't win in, in, in both chambers and Democrats can either keep the majorities or expand them. That's the best possible outcome for this country. But is that going to happen? I don't know. Anyway, I will be uh, doing a midterm election stream. So if you want to tune in uh, and check it out with me, that would be great. But um, yeah, there you go. Dark Brandon. A little late, but uh, better late than never, right? Maybe? I don't know.